Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, another awesome hands-on review with you guys. And today is all about the ThinkPad from Lenovo, and this is the ThinkPad 13. So uh, let's get started with our hands-on review. Here are the specifications on the ThinkPad 13. It's running a 2.3 gigahertz Intel 6th generation i3 processor. The display size is 13.3 inches. Resolution is 1920 by 1080, giving us full HD. And the display has anti-glare technology. It comes with an Intel HD Graphics 520 processor, which supports external monitors through HDMI or USB Type-C. It's able to support three independent displays using Lenovo's One Link Plus docking unit. The max resolution for the HDMI is 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hz, and the max resolution for the USB Type-C is 3840 by 2160 at 60 Hz. It comes with four gigs of WDR4 memory. It also comes with 128 gigs of M.2 solid state drive. The webcam is 720p. And one of the things I like about this laptop is it comes with TPM, which is trusted platform module. The weight is about 3.17 pounds. It does come with Windows 10 Pro 64-bit edition. And the case is a silver aluminum top and the bottom is PC with ABS plastic. So let's take a closer look at the ThinkPad 13. Now, if you're facing the laptop to the point that you're able to open up the lid, uh, let's take a look at the left-hand side. So I'm gonna turn it. Now, the first port that you're gonna see is your power. This is where you insert your power adapter. Right next to it is your Lenovo's One Link Plus connector. We also have a 3.0 USB port, and this one is also enabled as always on. Uh, you have your ventilation system right here to keep it nice and cool. And let's turn it to the other side. And on the other side, we have our lock mechanism. Right next to that, we have our Type-C USB port, HDMI. We have two additional USB 3.0 ports. And we have our hybrid, which allows us to hook up our headphone or our mic system. And the last port right here is our 4-in-1 SD card reader. Now with Lenovo's ThinkPad 13 having 128 gigs of M.2 solid state drive, I wanna test out how fast does it boot to the desktop. So I have my iPhone right here with the stopwatch and I'm gonna press start and the power button at the same time and see how fast does it boot to the desktop. So let's go one, two, and three. So it looks like it stopped on 14.69, which is not that bad. It was a little less, but I just waited until uh, everything was fully loaded to the point that I'm able to use it. So uh, that's pretty good. So what does the numbers tell us about this laptop? Now I ran Geekbench, PC Mark, as well as 3D Mark. Uh, I was kind of hesitant of running 3D Mark on this laptop because, again, it's running an Intel HD processor. It's not running a, uh, a classified processor for gaming. But I still ran it. Uh, so for Geekbench, I actually gave it a single core score of 2888. Uh, this was a 32-bit test. For 64-bit, it gave it 2399, which wasn't a huge, you know, jump. For multi-core score, it gave it uh, 4910 for 32-bit. And for 64-bit, it gave it 5156. Now for PC Mark 8 Home Bench, as you can see, it does a little bit of web browsing, uh, writing within Word, uh, casual gaming, uh, video chat between one to one, a little bit of little Photoshop editing, uh, creating filters and stuff. Uh, it's pretty fast for doing little home stuff. Uh, overall benchmark for that was 2330, and the duration of that benchmark was only 33 minutes and 36 seconds. The highest on gaming you could get for frames per second is 25.7, so that means if you guys are playing an intense game that goes beyond 25 frames per second, you most likely you're going to see a lot of lag. Now for home battery, uh, it gave it about 3 hours, which is not that bad. It really depends on how you guys are using it. Uh, PC Mark gave it a score of 2190, and this is for the home. Now, for work environment, it gave it 2457, and the battery life was about five hours, which is not that bad. But again, guys, it really depends on how you're using your machine. You can really have the machine last to maybe six hours, but if you're using it constantly, it's going to drain quickly. 
Now for creativity, for those individuals that like to do Photoshop, as you can see in the scores, it's not too good at all. For 4K, it gave it 208.1 seconds. For mainstream gaming, which is a little bit more intense, the highest that it could get is 7.9 frames per second, which is, again, really low if you guys are playing, I would say, Grand Theft of Auto. The overall score for that gave it 2225, and the duration for the benchmark was about an hour and 49 seconds. Now, for the battery life for creativity, again, it lasts about four hours and 22 minutes. It really depends on how you guys use this laptop. Now for the storage benchmark, what happens is it runs several applications such as World of Warcraft, Battlefield 3, Photoshop, Heavy Duty Photoshop, Light Photoshop, InDesign After Effects, and the numbers are pretty good. And it's a lot of reading and writing, opening up files, closing files, moving files over, copying and pasting huge data to one file to another. And uh, it's really fast. I think it's fast because of the 128 gigs M.2 solid state drive. Overall score gave it 4746. And the storage bandwidth is actually 127.96 megabytes per second. Now for the graphics processor. I know it's not a huge graphics processor like an NVIDIA GTX, but it is a graphics processor that allows you to play some type of game. Uh, the only two tests that I could actually run within the 3D Mark without burning this machine to the ground was uh, CloudGate and Skydiver. These two tests actually benchmark whether this machine is capable of doing light stream uh, gaming as well if it's capable to be a notebook or PC. Uh, it gave it a score of 4726 for CloudGate. It's right below of a laptop that's equipped with an Intel Core i7 5th generation processor running a GeForce 840M. Now for the Skydiver, again, it was way below and it gave it 3228, but it actually beat a laptop, an Office PC running an AMD processor. So let's get down into rendering. So if you're an individual that likes to render things like buildings using like SketchUp or like Maya, uh, you always wanna have a powerful laptop. So let's check out uh, Sidebench R15 and run it against our ThinkPad 13 and see how well it works. So let's go here and run the OpenGL and see how well it performs in the ranking. So it looks like the OpenGL completed with 24.08 frames per second and the rankings on the OpenGL, it ranks six, which is, which is okay. It's not that bad for Intel HD graphics uh, processor. It's not that bad. So let's take a look at the CPU and run the test. So the CPU benchmark within Sidebench R15 is completed and it ranked seventh. Uh, again, this guy is running a 2.31 gigahertz Intel i3 6th generation processor. It's, it's not that bad. It's not up to the top three, but hey, you know what? It's able to handle it with no problem, and I'm kind of satisfied with the, with the results. My favorite part on these hands-on review, guys, is how well does the laptop handle multiple things? So this is my multimedia processing benchmark. So what I like to do is have 10 MP3s within iTunes, latest and greatest iTunes, and I like to convert them into an AAC format. While that's converting, I like to go into Handbrake and convert a MP4 file into an NKV file. Now, I'm going to go to Source, and I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to go to 4K Video. Now this, right click, go to Properties, go to Details, and this is a 4K uh, video file. And uh, the frames is about 29, 30 frames per second and the size is about 646 megabytes. So I wanna convert this MP4 file into an NKV file. So let's uh, do MKV. I'm going to go to my iTunes, select everything, right click, and we're gonna create a AAC version of it. And I'm gonna click start. Then I'm gonna to go to browse, and let's drop it inside uh, the desktop. So our multimedia uh, benchmark is completed. Uh, it finished 
converting uh, 10 of our MP3s to AAC uh, version within iTunes, which is the latest and greatest. Within Handbrake, we had a 4K MP3 4 file and we converted it into a MKV file. It took about seven minutes. Uh, I'm happy that the laptop didn't blow up, but uh, it, it's able to handle it, but it's a little slow. So the next benchmarking on the Lenovo ThinkPad 13 is image processing. Now I like to use Photoshop and within Photoshop, I like to do a batch process. Uh, I have a folder with about 32 images and each image is about two to three megabytes in size. Let's right click on one of them, go to properties and go to details. And they're roughly about 4,160 by 3,120 by dimension, which is pretty big. Uh, so we're gonna close that up and we're gonna go inside Photoshop. We're gonna go to file and we're gonna go to scripts, image processor. I'm gonna select that folder on my desktop which is called images and from there same location I want the quality to be 12 and I'm gonna run an action on this I'm gonna run the action of quadrant colors let's start our timer right here awesome we're gonna click on run and start So our image processing benchmark is completed and it completed with one minute and 31 seconds, close to 32 seconds, which is not that bad. Uh, that's, that's pretty fast. So image processing, I think the ThinkPad 13 can do it. One of my favorite tests that I like to do with you guys during these hands-on review is benchmarking video. <laughs> the reason why is because I'm always trying to find the best laptop uh, when I'm editing these videos for you guys. So uh, I like to use Adobe Premiere Pro uh, Creative Cloud. And we're going to actually take that 4K file that we've been using throughout this hands-on video and we're going to insert it inside our project bin. And let's go inside uh, 4K video. Double click on that. Let's import it. Once it's fully imported, we are going to right click on it. We're going to create a new sequence from the clip. And I'm going to change the view because I want to make sure that this is the 4K. This one is running 30 frames per second. And it's about uh, a minute and 46 seconds long. And the dimensions is 3840 by 2160, which is right on 4K. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it down into a 1080p. So let's go to file. What we're going to do is export media. I want to export it into a H.264 format. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and locate Let's pick YouTube HD 1080p, 29.97 frames per second. And let's drop it inside here. Let's do find new cut. Awesome. Cool. So I'm going to put my little timer right here. And I am going to export and click the timer. So finally, uh, Premiere completed, uh, running a 4K file and converting it to a 1080p uh, took about 26 minutes. Yeesh, I definitely will not be using this laptop to uh, edit and render my video files. Uh, because again, this 4K file is only about a minute and 46 seconds. Imagine, imagine if it was a little longer, it took forever. So, so far we've done a lot of benchmarking with this hands-on and I feel a little bit of heat coming from the ventilation. And so you're probably saying to yourself, how hot does this uh, laptop get? So we're gonna actually turn it from the back side. It is a little warm. I have my trusty little uh, infrared uh, thermometer and I'm just gonna shoot it. And it's actually reading 97.8. Woo, wow. That's pretty warm. It's not to the point that it's going to burn your lap if you guys are, like to use the laptops on your lap, but uh, it, it does get a little warm. So how about the build? How about the design of the laptop? Overall, I like the way that the laptop feels. It is classified as an ultra book. Uh, it's a little heavy for an ultra book, but hey, 
That's my opinion. One of the things I love about this laptop is the display. It is an anti-glare display. It is full HD with 1920-1080, which is another plus for me. Now for the keyboard. Now the keyboard, I'm super impressed with the keyboard. And the reason why I'm so impressed with the keyboard is because like all the keys are spaced out in a way that I'm not bunched up or I'm not clicking on the wrong keystroke when I'm typing, which is a plus. I like the fact that, uh, as always, the ThinkPads always have that nice little point mouse kind of thing. Uh, on the mouse pad, I have a little bit of uh, concern with, with the mouse pad. Uh, I do like the fact that it has the right click and left click and also the little middle, middle button that you're able to use it like a, an actual mouse. But the touchpad, you're able to use the left and right click. But the only downside about the touchpad is that it's not responsive sometimes. Uh, when I'm trying to drag and drop something into the desktop from a flash drive or an external hard drive, it doesn't automatically grab the file and drop it, which I hate. Uh, eventually, I have to use these little secondary guys to use it and then use this to move the mouse, and then it works with no problem. But that's the only thing I don't like about this Ultrabook is just the mouse pad, it lags a little bit. It's not responsive all the time. All right, guys, so that concludes our hands-on review on the Lenovo ThinkPad 13. You guys saw the numbers within Geekbench, PC Mark, 3D Mark. Uh, we did some video, imaging, and multimedia processing. We even took the temperature at the bottom, and it looks like it read about 98.7, and uh, which gets a little warm when you're constantly using it. Uh, overall, this is a great laptop. It's a little pricey for me. I think the starting range for this is around $699 to $1299. Uh, and it, it's, yeah, it really depends on how you guys get it. It does come with the solid state drive, which is 128 gigs. Uh, you're also able to upgrade it to uh, a one terabyte drive and the solid state drive, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but overall, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this hands-on with the Lenovo ThinkPad 13. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.